In this exercise, we're going to have a quick look at, at typography, an introduction to typography, if you will. Just a little five minute exercise. Now, typography is both an art and a science, playing a crucial role in how text is perceived and understood in various forms of media. It involves the careful selection and arrangement of type to facilitate readability, convey mood, and guide the reader's eye through the content. This introduction will delve into four key aspects of typography. Point size, line spacing, line length, and font choice. Understanding how each of these elements contributes to effective design can enhance the reader's experience in both print and digital environments. Now, Directive 1. Typography determines the quality of your document, and that's determined in the main by the body text. Why, you ask? Because in most books, it's the body text that makes up most of the document. Start every book by making the body text look good. And the next four directives are how you do that. Now take particular notice of the image on the right. There's two types of font in that. Very clear. Can you work out what they are? Directive 2 is point size. How big your font is, is measured in points in normal conditions. For body text, this is usually 10 point or 12 point. Because not every font appears equal at a given size, you should be prepared to adjust your size to suit your need, always keeping within that range. So some font types in point 12 will be a slightly different size than another font in the same point size. You may have to adjust slightly, but don't over adjust. And in the image you can see there, I've got at the top, regular, Cormorant Garamond regular 12 point, and it's pointing to the text, which is set at Cormorant Garamond regular. Number three, line spacing, otherwise known as leading, as in the metal of lead. This is the vertical distance between lines, and it should be between 120 and 145 percent of the body text point size. The default single line spacing is too tight, and 1.5 line option is too loose. You set your leading or line spacing in the paragraph panel. Now you can see that there. I've got the arrow pointing to the paragraph, so you select paragraph in the tabs, and where it says leading, it'll probably have, as I've got there, 14.4 points, but the leading, you can also just type in 120%, and it will interchange. If you select off that, you'll see 14.4. If you select in that space, you will see 120%, so it's interchangeable. It lets you really fine tune the line spacing. So I've got it at 120%, not 145, and you can see the font there at 120% is really quite readable. You don't want it any wider than that with that much text. And you can see there how important it is in your paragraph. Now line length. This will have a direct bearing on your margin selection. So experiment before you commit your project. Line length is the horizontal width of the text block. It should be between 45 and 90 characters per line, depending on point size. In the instance on the right, it's about 60 to 7 characters per line for 12 point Garamond or the equivalent of two or three lowercase alphabets all in a row, and you can see I've got them there. 
Now, if you have a look at that page on the right, you'll see it's inner margins and outer margins are half an inch and 0.75 inches. Never mind the top and the bottom, it's the horizontal length of the line. Now, if you make those margins a lot wider, inch and a half, on either side, for instance, you won't have the required number of lines per page, quite a number of characters per line. So you can, you can adjust your margins slightly. And obviously you do this in the document settings. When you're happy with your margins, which will control your line length, then you can carry on. Font choice, all very important. Although your computer comes loaded with probably thousands of fonts, and Windows uses different fonts than Mac, the best advice is to ignore them. Never choose Times New Roman or Arial if you can get away with it. That's just being lazy. Choose only commercial fonts. That way you know they're built with care and attention and will reproduce on your screen, in your book, just how you want them. If you must use free fonts, use only the best and use them sparingly. I would suggest never have more than two types of fonts in any book or production. And you can see on the right there, I've got font choices for fiction and each, each line is in the font um, specified. Garamond, Baskerville, Georgia, Palatino. They're all serif fonts. For non-fiction work, you've got Times New Roman, which I just admonished you not to use, but there you go, it's one of the favourites. Helvetica, now that's a sans serif font. Use that for headings. Remember that newspaper we just looked at a, a moment ago? Helvetica for headings. Book Antiqua, Cassion, which is an Adobe font, and Minion Pro. They're all slightly different, and all but Helvetica are serif fonts. Try not to use sans serif fonts in your body text. Very difficult to read. Okay, well that's it. Remember these five rules and you'll begin each book or document the right way with excellent typography. See you in the next little video.